Hello everyone, welcome back to the Steam Completion Challenge. This is a challenge in which I am beating each one of the games in my 1500 plus Steam library. If you're interested in seeing what I've played up to this point, check out the playlist in the description or the card in the corner. Anyways, on to today's episode, Uno. Ah, Uno. What a classic card game. One of the most well known in our era. One that was on every single Xbox 360. Well, except maybe one. Record it and make that my upload right? I don't have to do that. Just fuck off. Everyone has Uno, dipshit. It came free with your fucking Xbox. I didn't get it. I have the oldest Xbox known to man. No, you don't. I bought mine on day one. Well, mine didn't have it. You have Uno, you fucking dick! Anyways, Uno in the form we know it today was developed in 1971 by Merle Robbins. It was derived from Crazy 8s and follows similar gameplay. He originally played with friends and family until others wanted to play more, so he sold it at his barbershop and to other local businesses. Eventually it was sold to Robert Tezik. Later in 1992, International Games Incorporated became a part of the Mattel family of companies. The game itself has seen many electronic versions adapted from it ranging from standalone handhelds to all major consoles of the past generation. Uno has become one of the most popular and successful card games of all time. The game for this review is the 2016 version. So what is in store for an Uno player? The game of Uno is very simple. It is a card game in which every player is dealt seven cards with one face up in the middle. The goal of the game is to get rid of all your cards before anyone else. You do this by playing either similar colored cards or ones that match the number or symbol as the card in the middle on your turn. Every turn you may only play one of the cards and then it becomes another player's turn. There are multiple special cards that change the flow of the game of course, these being skips, reverses, draw two, wild, and wild draw fours. Each of these will mess with other players while also putting yourself at a better advantage. Of course, the only downside of playing those cards is pissing off your friends in the process. Here we go, bro! I'm not gifted and fifty. I'm just throwing that out there. What is this game, dude? Are you serious? Give me a green card! What are you doing? Holy shit! But besides those things, there really isn't anything else to mention in the gameplay section. It is a really simple card game, but also fast paced and quite addictive. Before getting into a typical game of Uno on PC, there are several things to note. One is the amount of players. There are four players at all times. This can be made up of your friends or bots or a mixture of both. I'm not really sure why this is the case, as with the normal game you can have up to 10 people, or as little as 2. Another thing to note before starting is the addition of extra rules that can be added to any game. These are the things that make a normal 5 to 10 minute Uno game take up to hours. Make it a different oh, color so that you can't play. Nice, it's a double, it's a double. Alright, Grizzly gonna fatten this deck up real nice here. No, no, you're damn right! <laughs> you're damn right! God damn boy, that's so much marbling no, on that meat, look no. at that! Please. Oh, that, pep off, yeah. that deck practically wag you at this point! The different rules come in various forms. These being stacking, which allows the player to add their own draw 2 or 4 down onto an existing draw card, increasing its total amount. 7-0, where a 7 allows you to swap hands with another player, and a 0 makes everyone switch hands. Jump in, which allows you to skip other players if you have the same card that was just played. Force play, if you draw a card and it's playable, you have to set it down. No bluffing, which allows wild cards to be played without being challenged. And finally the most chaotic one, draw to match, which forces you to keep drawing in your hand until you have a card to play. This last one can make a game go from almost being done all the way back up to 20 cards in one hand. Oh. Uh. <laughs> this is the only card I had. I guess I could have kept it. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, keep drawing. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <sighs> oh, God. <laughs> it won't. Oh! You won't believe this. What? 
Oh. <laughs> For any given game, any or all these settings can be turned on. But fair warning, this is how you destroy friendships. In my case for recording the footage for this episode, I play with my good friend X Gusfring X. We play with two bots in our session, as there is something about this version I haven't mentioned yet. This game uses the Ubisoft Connect Launcher, previously known as Origin, which in many ways defeats the purpose of having this game available on Steam at all. The main reason this is an issue is that the game now requires another platform to use it. So to play the game via Steam, you get to buy it through Steam, but then you also have to make a Ubisoft account as well. One of the issues, which I didn't experience personally, is the functionality of the multiplayer on their servers. Many players have had rampant issues with disconnecting or even lacking the ability to join people on their friends list. So just be aware of that in case you're interested in this version of the game. Outside of that, we decided to run with stacking, 7-0, jump in, and draw to match. These settings led to some interesting interactions. Uh-oh. Good. What do you mean, uh-oh? No! <laughs> Blue, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, jump in! <laughs> Blue! <laughs> I wish it stacked on itself, because that way I could How like- How dare you, you're a liar! <laughs> <laughs> 21 cards. Oh, oh no. my god. Also, the bots tend to be really good at kicking ass, so we had to collaborate for one of us to even have a chance at beating them. We played several rounds to get the footage for this video, but there really wasn't an end goal in sight. In terms of the challenge itself, there really isn't anything you do to beat it. You can play with all sorts of settings or several rounds and see who gets the highest score but there isn't any incentive to keep you playing outside what you make of it. I think for the challenge, the way I beat this was by beating the bots with my friend. Like how the past couple games have ended up, having fun with the game and friends is the best way to experience it overall. In terms of extra content, there is a lot of skins, narrator voices, backgrounds, and effects. A lot of these are unlocked the more you play, but some are locked behind a paywall. There are a total of 7 paid DLC packs that give you more card skins and backgrounds, but honestly using the default or unlockable options are more than worth it. While we're on the subject, let's talk about all the offerings with the Steam version. If you were to purchase this game on Steam, it would cost you $9.99. You can also get this game alongside the DLC in an Ultimate Edition for $19.99. You can always get the pack separately on the page, but they range from $2.99 to $4.99 a piece. Overall, I would recommend just getting the base game on sale or off sale. The $9.99 price is pretty fair for what you get. I will say that those who already use Discord and have access to Nitro, you can set up a game of Blazing Eights, which is extremely similar to Uno, onto your server and play with your friends that way. I've probably played an equal amount of both games to say that they're very similar. The only thing you'd be missing on the Discord game would be the various customizations that you would find on Uno. Outside of the price point, the Steam and Ubisoft version of Uno offers full controller support, remote play, and Steam trading cards, which there are five in the set. There are no Steam achievements with this title, however. I will say I'm not sure how well remote play works on this game as I haven't tested it, so make sure to do any additional research in case it doesn't function correctly. All things said and done, this is one of those games that you can easily hop into and play a couple rounds without any major commitment, which is nice. Over the years, I've put a little over 9 hours into it. Most likely I'll play it again here and there for short sessions. I can definitely recommend the game itself, but I'm a little more hesitant to recommend this version on Steam over other options that are available online. Thank you all for watching this episode of the Steam Completion Challenge. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing so you can stay up to date on the challenge. I also opened a Patreon if anyone wanted and is able to support my content. Right now on there are some Twitch stream VODs, but you will also get your name read out at the end of these videos as a thank you from me. So thank you again to Stranger for your support on Patreon. Anyways, the next episode of the challenge will be on Verlet Swing, so please stay tuned for that in the upcoming weeks. Thanks again for watching.